Hi, it's Jess here from nigessa.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. So I'm going to continue my junk journaling for beginners and I'm going to flick through um, and stop at different parts of journals that I've made and um, talk about what different things are called as I'm prompted when I see them. Okay, so come along and let's have a little look. It's, it's had a few little injuries along the way, um, but um, the cover of, of this is made from what you'd call junk. So um, we had a packet of um, selection of different types of crackers for cheese over Christmas. And this is the box. This is the box. I thought it was quite a nice size. It kind of worked really well with A4 folded in half and I looked at it and I thought that could be the basis of my cover so that was a bit of junk um, in there the spine um, that is made from so that's covered this bit of fabric here that goes all the way around is one of those vertical blinds you know if you've got vertical blinds at your windows that was an old vertical blind um, these are bits of lace that I got from a charity shop. Um, there is an old dictionary page back there. So lots of um, junk journalers use like book pages. And then there's just all sorts of stuff that I had in my scrap, in my stash that been there for a long time um, that I've just started using up. So not necessarily junk, they are real sort of craft products and also um, new things that I add sort of like all my stamps so as a crafter obviously I've been a stamping up demonstrator now for five years I have gazillions of stamps dies punches loads of ink etc and a lot of them go really well with um, junk journaling and I had this packet of I haven't opened this book for a long time which is which is um, tragic, really, uh, being as it was supposed to record 2020 and I haven't got very far in it. Um, but I had this paper pack. So lots of people use digitals, which you might think, what's a digital? These are things that creators make using sort of things like Photoshop and that um, to, to help you uh, get vintage images. But you can, like, I thought this looked very sort of vintage style. I've always, I've dyed it inked it stamped on it to make it look even more sort of vintage doilies are another thing that's used that one i just created a a pocket i've got a full flick through of this i just wanted to point out some of the sort of junk that you you might use so here's a map page i've got loads of old maps that are out of date my um my brother and his wife were checking them out. And I went, oh, I'll have them. So that's a, another bit of junk um, in there. Uh, music paper. Um, so all sourced from my local charity shop. So use a lot of that. This is an envelope um, that, that I got. So, lots, so, so envelopes that you get through the post. Those can be uh, reused. Um, what else have I got? So that's more book page there. Some good way of using up your old papers that you might never use again. Uh, they went in there. Any more junk in here? Uh, some, there's some tracing paper behind there. It's not really junk. I did have to buy that. Um, that envelope again. Just flicking through. I think this is as far as I've got with um, sort of doing this. So again, some more map pages, um, some paper napkins on there. So some people talk about napkin art. So there's a little bit there. I decoupaged some napkin on there. That simply means I just glued it down basically. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm just, so some more so people say, well, what do you do with the book pages? So that's a book page in there that I've just decorated. So it looks pretty. I could stamp on that. I could write on that. Made a little envelope. I can put things 
in that, decorated them so they look pretty. I made what we call ephemera out of book pages. So I stamped some of my stamps onto book pages, then punched them out. And that's what we call ephemera. So ephemera are just things, they could be real. So they could be like, like tickets. If you go out for the day and you've got a ticket and you want to keep that as a memory, that's a bit of ephemera. Um, or you can make it. So sort of tags and envelopes. And here is what we call a cluster. So a cluster is basically gathering some things together and putting together in a cluster. And it just makes a decorative element there on, on a page. And like, yeah, I've got music page there. I could then write a bit of journaling on a piece of paper and I could stick it on it. So, although, you know, I can't write that. Or I could just stick a photograph on there. Whatever it is that I wish to record. Use quite a bit of matte paper. I do like the look of matte paper in my books. More doilies. Uh, throughout just I'm sure I've got that some more envelopes that I have repurposed in there so this was the first journal that I made and I say there is a mixture of junk and other things that I've put together to make it look old and as you can see here I put a stick it in there that I wanted to remember and I don't like my writing so I sort of journaled in a way of writing the story and then sticking it on so uh, and that's real ephemera there that um, from the day and uh, and then I've got some photos my friend Andrea I'm not sure she'd be happy about me showing a photo of her on <laughs> my YouTube channel so that's that's that one. So that was made out of a cereal box. Another way of getting a journal cover is taking a book. So this is um, my first December daily uh, that I did. I didn't want it big. And um, so this was a book and I took the cover off and used that as the cover for my journal. And... Um, and just covered it. So these is what I was saying about digitals. So some of these um, were probably freebies that I found on different groups. Others are ones that I've sourced myself. So I've looked and found um, vintage images that are um, copyright free in the public domain that um, I can use. Some of these were shared as um, things that you um, could use in a December daily. I had started ticking off there when I'd written in every day. I clearly got bored after the 2nd of December, um, but I did actually complete this. So, um, yeah, so lots of freebies in this um, that, that I use. But here you can see how, because people say, how would you use it? So you can see in here ways that I have um, used my use the journaling I've got a mixture of writing things and adding adding pictures and um, little stories to go with it so lots of notes on that one so that was December 2020 on it says it at the front yeah that was December 2020 um, funny old Christmas we caught Covid um, so um, yeah and this is a different way of putting your signatures in is these are tied in so these could be taken out so this could be put away somewhere else that's my December of 2020 and I could reuse this cover for a different December so um, so that's that's that and this here, let's say I can easily take it out. She says, I can easily take it out. And this is what is referred to as a signature. So a signature is the folded pages that form part of your book. 
and these can be made out of all sorts of things so here i've used um pattern paper lined paper music paper coffee dyed paper um to to create you can use envelopes um all sorts um to create your uh, signature with uh, another way of making a cover is what i did with this one there are videos on all of these on my playlist so this is my edith holden one i made this using some chipboard so the sort of chipboard that you get at the end of a pad um, maybe with some um, designer series paper packs that you might buy um, that's where i get my chipboard from i don't buy it and then i just um i just used some construction tape and um, joined the two together down the spine to create that um you might have heard people talk about edith holden um she wrote a book she wrote um nature notes or the diary of an edwardian lady and so this is an edith holden themed um journal and um i've basically used lots of pages from that book which is another way of junk journaling taking an old book um cutting it up and um, making something beautiful with it um ed always looks at me and goes i can't believe you're destroying a book well i think i'm turning it i'm repurposing it giving it some new life and um creating something lovely um lots of people use like specimen slides so um obviously they're not real um i have got some real leaves in there that i collected from the park that's um, just around the corner laminated them and created myself some specimen slides labels lots of people you might hear talk about tracy labels so we're referring to tracy fox and she does lots of digitals and she's always she's got loads and loads of lovely labels and they're just perfect for decorating things so and i make my own as well so i made that label there uh, no other labels that i've made there so so yes yeah, so most of these are um the actual um book pages from edith holden and then some of them are little bits of digitals that i've either bought digital kits or i've downloaded them myself um, from the public domain i think these might be arty mays i think they are um uh, to, to create them another thing you can take is an envelope and decorate it um, you might have heard people talk um, altered paper clip this is an altered paper clip so underneath this is a paper clip and i've just direct de decorated i put some paper up in the middle i've decorated on the outside to create um an altered paper clip that just clips over a page this is an altered playing card which is another thing that you might hear people talk about it's just taking a playing card and turning it into something some people decorate it so that you um can still see the numbers as i've done then some people decorate it completely so you don't it's unrecognizable that's another form of altered paper clip that's really simple not a lot done to that one uh probably got more in here um this is flip out um so basically something that i've put on the side of a page and it flips out journaling card a card that you insert and journal on so you might have heard people talk about the whale tail tag punch or the whale tail punch in fact it's the rounded tab punch is its real name it was made by stamping up many years ago it has long since retired and whale tail is actually the design of the punch um, they don't make them this way anymore they make them this way and you can get this punch in this design 
they did produce it in this design as well um but they're like they're like hen's teeth they're very hard to get by most people who've got them keep hold of them and if you do end up buying one on a selling site you will pay an awful lot of money for them um so that's that uh what else have we got in here? Anything that... So, these are sewn-in signatures. I've used the three-hole pamphlet slip stitch. That's quite a common way of sewing in a signature and lots of people, and I was certainly put off by sewing. Actually, it's not too difficult um, to, to do, and um, I now don't even think about it. Um... Yeah, so I don't think there's any other sort of recycled bits on this that I've used. So um, there are two other things I'm thinking about that you might have heard people talk about. Um, traveller's Notebook. You might have heard people talk about Traveller's Notebook or TN. That is referring to the size. Um, so Traveller's Notebooks are smaller so this is basically a standard sheet folded in half this is like a um it's like six by eight and a half six by nine um so that takes a standard sheet folded in half these are smaller so they're generally like eight and a half by about four and a half um depending um and um this has been made um with a digital kit by Artie Bay's uh, Purple Medley. I've interspersed with, with other things, um, but um, this is um, what this has been made out of. So this is a digital kit, produced paper, beautiful paper like this to help you in your, your making. I've used um, sort of my stamp collection, my stamping up stamp collection to, um, to help um, with this and I did things like make a master board or a collage sheet and created these tags with it um, I'll show you one of those in a minute I can't got them to hand um, and so I also people dye paper so this paper which goes beautifully with the colour palette um, I dyed with red cabbage and then um, use this lovely purple ink for it um, that goes really nice it's a retired stamping up um, ink um, perfect plum i think it is i'm trying to find it i know i've got it around here somewhere but i can't see it um, and once i dyed the paper i then scanned it so that i could print it off and i've got some sort of vintage this is again what we call ephemera some vintage um like receipts um and i printed it on top of a printed um dyed paper so um so it came out in a color to match um what i was what i've been making it's an old exercise book my my son um was clearing out and um had a load of old exercise books that he had at school and said do you want them I went, oh yeah please um sweetie bags so so yeah uh got a lot of those um in there this is an old ledger book uh junk journalists do like to use old ledger books so i got this one off ebay um and i quite like the fact that it was a blue color and i i thought it went well with this that's that lovely rounded tag punch again old postcards are something that's used this was in the kit um, but I have purchased some vintage postcards um, myself um, as well the um, the kit has lots of tags I'm one for then embellishing I don't like to just leave it plain I like to add my own thing but the nice thing about buying a digital kit like this is that it all matches and it all it all looks you know really lovely 
together and um, it's nice with some modern things that you might add to it this is another altered paper clip so what I've got there over this page it looks pretty there it's holding that postcard but it looks a pretty decoration in itself on the back it's holding a journaling card again it looks pretty and that was a paper clip that I decorated to um, enable those to be hooked on the page so it's quite interactive very nice and it is an easy way to put things um, over a page she says there we go again music paper music paper often features that i sprayed it with the ink lots of people use i made my own spray just with a re-inker and some alcohol and sprayed it on um, myself book page and so yeah so that is a tn a traveler's notebook okay so that's a traveler's notebook sewn in this is a traveller's notebook that I made, which is in what they call the Midori style. Midori is a brand name and it is when you have pieces of elastic and you can hold your journal in there. And this cover has been laminated and, um, and this was made with stamping up paper that I really liked, this purple stuff. And again, my red cabbage start, tart dyed um, paper, paper. And I haven't done much to it in terms of embellishing. Um, I wanted something a little bit plainer, what is often referred to as a naked journal. So it's got hardly any embellishment so that you can add it as you go or use it just for writing in. So uh, that is... That is the Midori style. I have sewn this. Some people don't. Some people just put the loose pages around um, and leave it like that. Um, then you might do a soft cover. Um, so this was made with a, um, a jiffy envelope. That's what I call them. Um, those sort of padded envelopes that have got bubble wrap. Um, this is sari silk, which is a, another thing that people buy and use in their junk journals. Um, this is some old lace. This is an old skirt um, that I used to wear. I went shopping one day in my own wardrobe and dragged out things. This is some upholstery fabric, which I bought in... A charity shop um, and some old lace so I do buy most of my stuff like this from a charity shop so this you can hear it crinkly this is an old envelope and that's what I've used to make this and I have sewn lots of junk journalers will sew um, and I created a pocket there with some sari silk and my old skirt and I have, this is made using um, some material that I sourced myself that is all on um, public domain and um, I created these tags. That's not, that was a freebie from Artie Mays. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can get vintage stuff yourself by looking, looking around and seeing what you can find. Um, so this is a mixture of um, stuff that I bought and stuff that I found myself. So this was a document, I think this was a set I purchased um, and I've just printed it on parchment paper, added ink and stamping to make it look really, really old and um, stuck it in my pocket there. Created my own little labels. Again, I've got some um, matte paper. This is uh, a receipt I bought myself from an antique shop. And um, yeah, so uh, 
I have in here got my altered envelope. I did a, a really nice altered envelope. I think it's in this one. No, it's not. It's in a different one. I lied. Um, so, yeah, old postcards there that I'd create. So it was being scanned and printed off and I created a journaling card with it. So, um, yeah, so that's a, a soft cover one. Um, so let me do masterboards. Let me find one. So here's some masterboards that I've created. And um, so this is um, these first two I created using a class I bought from Tracy Fox. And so everything she provided some digitals and they're all copyright free so that we could create masterboards and scan them. So I created this masterboard and um, I did scan them and print them off. So I've got paper that I can print. Um, I need to scan it again. So this was uninked and now I've inked it. So I need to go back and scan these. And now I've done it on 12 by 12 um some scrapbook paper I didn't particularly like and um so now I can scan it again now that it's been inked and it'll look quite a bit different um to this and then that can be used uh, again and again and again um and so basically it's a collage but um if it's a masterboard then and you scan it in then it can be like you have a master copy of something um so so yeah, so that's that one. That's one. So this one's got a bit of colour in it. This one's got no colour in it. Um, I did these whilst on holiday last summer. When we had that heat wave, I went down to Cornwall in a caravan. And this is what I did in the evenings. And it was really, really enjoyable. And then the next two I made whilst on holiday in the Lake District. Um, I can't go, I can't just sit and do nothing. I have to have a play. So I made um, these. I think most of this is from my carefully sourced copyright free stuff. Um, so again, I can easily scan those and reproduce them. And then I decided to make one that was sort of diagonal. So it's a little bit different. So uh, yeah, I've made these in preparation. I might make my own digitals. I'm not sure, not sure. Cause they do take quite a lot of time and uh, so and then this was um one i made and scanned i haven't got the original because i cut it up and put it in one of those journals that i've just showed you so scan it at different stages so that is that the same one well those that's 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 the example so that is stage one scanned it and then i added more to it so that's the same sheet but then I've added extra bits to it, scanned it again. So you can get it in, in different stages um, if you want to. So that was second stage of this one with the things already added. I will have a copy of it without them added. And then cut them up and make tags and add more things to it and then scan the tags. So they can be sort of quick, easy tags um, if you want them to use again and again and again so that is masterboard um i can't think of anything else that um i can think of um so let's just grab some paper here so this is lots of people use tea or coffee dyed paper as kind of their basis some people um use sprays inks um what have you but this is just ordinary a4 writing paper um and this could be a signature and it would simply be folded in half and that's the start of a signature and that one can also be folded in half and that will join together and then I've got that is then eight pages 
so because it's one two three four five six seven eight so i've used two sheets fold it in half creates eight pages um when i coffee dyed these um what i what i did was i folded it i folded it up in the coffee stain and then that that created all these sort of lines in it so you get sort of quite a nice effect so it looks really really old and grungy uh, i started with um drying them off in the oven so if you see this pattern here that's because i've got um a baking sheet with like a grid that um you use for making things like chips oven chips and things like that it keeps the fat off and they just make an interesting an interesting mark on the paper sometimes one of my pans has got a bit of muck and rust on it so i always get quite dirty marks on it but i quite like that in some places um, i now air dry i don't use the oven um, i found that um, unless you really so when the oven gets really hot um, it is it is possible to leave it in too long uh, i didn't and, and you get burning and then it weakens it and uh, so now i tend to soak it in some coffee well tea i tend to use now so it doesn't smell um leave it soaking for maybe 20 minutes and then spread them out on some towels on the kitchen table leave them there if it's summer it's warm if it's winter the heating's on and they just dry quite nicely and that's what i do so that's coffee um you can use other things you've seen my red cabbage let me just take out a pile of avocado so you can use avocados um and believe it or not they come out pink so i uh i have had some really poor results and i've had some beautiful pink results um like this um and this was when i started air drying because um drying in the oven gave it more of a brown tinge where well, i quite like this sort of pinky tinge and the other thing i use i say is red cabbage but it doesn't always come out that purpley color you get some variations in color with red cabbage so i've got some blues this is all the same batch got some blues got some purples so it's always really exciting you don't quite know what you're gonna what you're gonna get and different so that's really thick card and this is thin paper so that kind of can make a difference to to what you get so when that you can um when they're when they're dry pile them up and put them under a heavy weight to get them flat or you can iron them um, and yes, I dye, I dye my toilies. I also, um, dye book pages if they're not quite, um, vintagey looking enough. I'll get some of those. So I am going to make an Alice in Wonderland journal. This is not an old book at all. Um, it's got the original, um, drawings in them, but... The pages are really clean looking, so I will be coffee dyeing or tea dyeing these papers to make them look old. I thought I had done a batch. I'm sure I have. Can't find them. That's really not unusual for me. But you can see the difference here. So this one, um, I didn't tea dye. This one's been inked, I think, with soft suede. Um, and you can see the difference and that's the look i want i don't want nice clean you can make them clean um i got a friend who always says i don't like that grungy dirty look but you can make your journals clean as well they don't have to all be grungy um so yeah that is 
think everything that I was thinking of telling you in this first uh, video. You can check it out. I've got playlists with um, lots of the journals that I've made. Um, if there's any other confusing terminology that um, you've heard of and um, you'd like to know what it is, I'll do my best to answer. I'm not an expert. It's just a hobby that I have um, grown to love over the last couple of years and there's nothing I enjoy more than um, messing about with old things or making new th things look old. Um, so, yeah. Um, another that you might be thinking, what's an altered book? Well, that's um, that's the next thing I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be a, a doing a sort of beginner series on an altered book. And I've already videoed the first two um, uh, episodes of that, where I take a book and alter it. Um, I've already, I'm not going to show you, no sneak peek. You've seen the cover and a little bit of something else that's coming in episode three. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so do join me for that. And um, yeah, hope that's been useful. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe and then you'll be able to see more of what I make. Okay, bye. So I hope that was useful and not too rambly. Um, and um, I shall uh, bring you um, an altered book next time in this beginner series okay bye for now don't forget to like and subscribe